Cape Cod was the perfect location for researchers who wanted to know what happens to tiny airborne particles and clouds as they move from North America out over the Atlantic Ocean. The Cape is downwind from several industrial areas. Regions with the highest man-made emissions typically have high levels of aerosol particles, which were the focus of this study. Aerosols can occur naturally, as in dust or sea salt, or from human activity, such as soot and gases from tailpipe exhaust. The particles play an important role in warming or cooling the atmosphere, but are not well understood. Researchers at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory developed the Two-Column Aerosol Project, which was funded by the Department of Energy's Atmospheric Radiation Measurement Program. ARM's mobile research facility was deployed on the Cape for one year. It sampled aerosols and other atmospheric data from two locations, one on shore and one out over the ocean. It also included two intensive airborne sampling missions, one in the summer and one in the winter. One of the topics they studied was how the particles interact directly with sunlight, depending on their optical properties. So if you think of, of aerosols that tend to be relatively br what we call bright, that they reflect a lot of sunlight, they could actually help cool the atmosphere because they reflect light back to space. Whereas if you have these dark aerosol that are absorbing light, um, they could actually warm the planet. Aerosols affect clouds. Water droplets must have a particle to form or condense onto. And the chemical composition of the particles can make clouds reflect more or less warmth from the sun. We are developing new innovative tools to look at, say, particle chemistry. Um, one of the things that we had in our most recent field campaign is a special mass spectrometer that could tell us about the chemical composition of individual particles. We're developing instruments um, called a sun photometer, which is really just a fancy way of saying it goes out and measures sunlight, but it measures it at a, a number of different wavelengths and is able to tell us um, quite a bit about the chemical composition of the atmosphere and then the, the number of particles that are in the atmosphere and how they're interacting with the sunlight. We had it mounted on top of a research aircraft that we deployed during the two-column aerosol project, or TCAP. And it was its first scientific deployment, and it's an instrument that is able to tell us about the number of particles um, in the atmosphere. Because we're measuring at certain levels, we can infer changes in the number of particles. PNNL researchers also looked at aerosol mixing. Is the particle pure, or has it combined with various chemical compounds in the atmosphere? And does that change how it interacts with sunlight? Understanding the entire life cycle of a particle is important so it can be represented in climate models. As analysis of their data began, the researchers had an initial surprise. One of the things that we're seeing from the, the summertime deployment that's really kind of surprising is that we see very frequent layers of aerosol in the atmosphere. So we'll have aerosols relatively near the surface, which is where we would expect to find them, right? Because most of the particles are emitted from the surface. But we also see these, these layers higher up in the atmosphere that are coming either from forest fires or other sources. You know, that's what we're trying to piece together where they actually came from. But those happen a lot. They happen a lot more frequently than we had expected to see um, over Cape Cod. And it looks like they're having a bigger impact on the amount of sunshine reaching the surface than we would have anticipated before the study. Numerical models of aerosol transformation and interaction within clouds are highly simplified in large-scale models. The TCAP data will help ensure this aspect of atmospheric science is better reflected in climate models. Well, what we'll do is we'll run the model, we'll, we'll take our best estimate of what the emissions are, so what's being emitted by factories and roads and the plants, and do some simulations with the model and then compare that with the data we have and then use that to help us guide, okay, we ran the model, we're not getting the right answers. What do we need to change? How do we change it to make the models better? The TCAP campaign is just coming to a close, but the long process of analyzing the data will continue for years to come. PNNL scientists continue to advance our ability to provide ever more accurate projections about how the climate is changing.